This is a late 2013 15-inch MacBook Pro that I just bought secondhand from eBay for 237 US dollars. And it is absolutely filthy, completely caked with 10 years worth of dust, dirt, and other filth. Now, the photos on the eBay listing were pretty blurry, and the owner said it had been sitting in a drawer for the last few years. So I didn't really know what to expect when I bought it, but what I can say is it gets hot. Really, really hot. Just sitting on the desktop results in a CPU temperature of 50 degrees Celsius. And if I'm doing anything intensive, it becomes scalding hot with temperatures reaching almost 100 degrees Celsius, which results in a ton of thermal throttling. So in this video, I'm going to disassemble this MacBook and clean it thoroughly, including getting rid of all the dirt inside and dust in the fans, and also give it a fresh application of some high quality thermal paste. And yes, I do have some before and after benchmarks for the temperature and performance, and the results are surprising. So make sure you stay tuned. Also, if you're after a high-tech charger for your MacBook, stick around for a sponsor segment from Ugreen. More on that later. Okay, time to open this bad boy up and see what we're working with. The back is pretty easy to get open. There's just 10 P5 screws that need to be removed. Judging by the back case, that's completely covered in a thick layer of dust. I'm going to have my work cut out for me. And yep, as I expected, that is the result of 10 years of dust and dirt. Now, to be fair, it's not the filthiest MacBook I've ever seen, but this is still a significant amount of dust that's going to have a massive effect on this MacBook's ability to cool itself down. The heat pipe fins are almost completely caked in thick dust too, which is going to have a huge impact on the amount of air that can actually be passed over them. And this is really bad because these fins are what actually cools down the CPU and GPU inside the MacBook. Taking a closer look at the fans, they're not much better. Completely choked with dust, hair, dirt, and probably some other things, but we won't go there. So let's start disassembling this filthy MacBook and see what we can do. Starting with the battery, curiously in system report, it says it's only done one charge cycle. And there is an official sticker covering the battery connection. Now this makes me think that either Apple or a service provider replaced the original battery. That being said, it looks kind of swollen. So although it might technically be new, it might have been replaced years ago and the MacBook just left inside a drawer ever since, which means I'll probably need to replace this battery with a new one. Anyway, I disconnected the battery cable to make sure I don't accidentally short anything and there's no power going to any of the components. I wanted to take apart as much of the MacBook as possible, so I started with the fans. They're relatively simple to remove, just loosen a flex cable that provides power to the fan and a few screws around the side and the entire assembly lifts straight out. Here you can see just how filthy those fan blades are. It's a wonder any air gets through at all. Moving to the other fan, this one is a little bit more complicated. There are a few cables running across the fan, connecting the Wi-Fi card, but disconnecting these and a few more flex cables, the fan screws become accessible and can be unscrewed. And again, the entire fan assembly simply lifts out. While I'm at it, and to make the cleaning process easier, I'll remove the Wi-Fi card as well. Next, I wanted to replace the thermal paste on the CPU and GPU dies, so to access that, I need to remove the heat pipe that runs across both the CPU and GPU. I wanted to release that pressure evenly, as this heat pipe is attached very tightly to the logic board, and I don't want to crack or bend it. So I slowly unscrewed both the CPU and GPU screws at the same time. There are two screws attaching the heat pipe to either end, and once they're removed, the entire heat pipe lifts up, revealing the crusty, dry thermal paste that was applied sometime in 2013, almost 10 years ago. Before we clean up the CPU and heat pipe though, let's tackle the fans. The fan enclosure is held in place by three tiny screws, and once removed, you can pull the top half apart, revealing the blades underneath. Surprisingly, there really wasn't as much dust here as I originally thought. I've seen much worse, although this will still definitely have a major impact on the cooling capability and thermals of the MacBook. 
Using a small plastic brush, I cleaned out all the large debris and dust, revealing a large amount of junk from just one fan blade. And a few minutes of brushing later, the left fan looks much better, especially compared to the right. Finishing off the remaining fan, you can see just how much dirt I was able to extract from both of them. Remember, this is stuck in your fan for every single rotation the blades make, which is anywhere from 2,000 to 6,000 rotations per minute. Next, I gave the fan assembly covers a quick spray with some isopropyl alcohol to wipe off the remaining dust. Cool fact, you can see these fans were actually made by a company called Nidec, which is still in business today making fans and motors among other things. Before putting the fans aside, I reattached the top cover and screws. And just before we get into cleaning the inside of this filthy MacBook though, a quick word from our sponsor. Ugreen has a wide range of useful and high quality accessories for your phone, tablet or laptop. Their recently released Nexode 100 watt charger is a USB-C charger with three USB-C ports and a USB-A port supplying up to 100 watts of power. This will allow you to charge a phone, tablet, laptop, and more all at the same time. You can charge your iPhone 13 to 60% in 30 minutes or fully charge your 16 inch MacBook Pro in just 1.5 hours. With the latest GAN chipset, it is three times faster than your original iPhone charger. And speaking of this new GAN chipset, paired with a foldable plug, the Nexo charger fits into the palm of your hand without sacrificing quality or power. So make sure you check out the Ugreen Nexo 100 watt charger using the link in the description below and get it for the Amazon DOTD price of $54.39 on May 30th. One day limited time. Okay, time for the fun part. Let's clean the inside of this MacBook. Now, this is usually where you see people breaking out the compressed air, but the cool kids use an electric duster these days that's not only more powerful than compressed air, but safer and easier to use too. I actually made a video on this specific duster that I'll link down below, and I definitely recommend picking one of these up if you do any kind of semi-regular dusting of computer components. So armed with my fancy duster, I blasted the dusty areas of the MacBook, paying close attention to the areas where dust is most likely to collect. I also blasted the cooling fins on the heat pipe because they were almost completely gunked up with dirt and dust. I also followed up with a thorough brushing for good measure. Ah, <sighs> that's looking much better. For the remaining surface dust on the MacBook that didn't come off with the duster, I sprayed a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on a clean cloth and gently wiped the dusty areas down. Now it's time to clean off that nasty 10 year old thermal paste from the CPU and GPU. I tackled the heatsink first and you can see this thermal paste is so old and crusty, it's almost dust. I had to thoroughly soak it in isopropyl alcohol several times before I could get it all off. And moving back to the MacBook, I used a Q-tip to break off the large chunks of thermal paste and reveal the Intel Core i7 CPU and also the tiny little Intel Iris Pro integrated GPU just to the right. Also, about two centimeters to the right of this chip, you can see the NVIDIA GeForce GT 750M GPU. It even has the little NVIDIA logo on it. Now, after a few minutes of cleaning, they were both nice and shiny. So I hit them and also the heat pipe with some Arcti Clean to prep the surface for thermal paste. This was probably an unnecessary step, but I wanted to make sure the surfaces of the dyes were perfect and ready for some high quality thermal paste. And as you can see, they're about as clean as you can get. Next, it's time to apply some thermal paste. This is Ceramic 2 from Arctic Silver, which is my paste of choice because it's a very high quality compound. I've used it in everything from an Intel 12900K build to old MacBooks like this one, and it works really, really well. Applying a small amount to the surface of each die, I then took a spudger and smoothed it out over the entire surface. And yes, because these dies do not have integrated heat spreaders like a typical CPU in your desktop PC would, it's best to cover the entire surface of the die evenly rather than just leaving a pea-sized amount like you usually would. Okay, so now all the hard stuff is done, time to put everything back together, starting with the heatsink. I lightly screwed each screw to hold the heatsink in place, taking care to not make them too tight. Once all the screws were in, I tightened both the CPU and GPU heatsink areas down gradually in a star pattern to ensure the pressure was applied evenly. 
again, so I don't crack or bend the heatsink in any way. Then at this point, you just repeat the disassembly process from back to front. Put back all the remaining heatsink screws, the SSD and Wi-Fi card. By the way, we will be upgrading that SSD in another video, so stay tuned. Also, we'll reinstall the fans, connect the flex and power cables, and finally reconnect the battery cable. I also wiped down the inside of the back case with a quick spray of isopropyl alcohol and a paper towel. But before screwing it back on, I took a second to admire just how clean this 10 year old laptop now looked. I mean, say what you want about Apple, but for this machine to hold up so well after all these years is a testament to the build quality of the MacBook. Anyway, to finish off, I screwed the back case on and also sprayed some isopropyl alcohol on the exterior to clean all the dirt and grime off. Lastly, I wiped the screen down with a microfiber cloth and some screen cleaner. The screen glass looks brand new after all the fingerprints and smudges came off. Okay, time for the part you've all been waiting for. Just how big of a difference did cleaning this MacBook make? Let's go back in time to when I just unboxed this MacBook out of the eBay packaging. Just idling on the desktop and doing nothing, the CPU was hot, hovering around 50 degrees Celsius. After cleaning though, it now sits around 30 to 35 degrees, which is almost a 15 degree decrease from before. When doing intensive tasks, both the CPU and GPU would get extremely hot and thermal throttle massively. During a Cinebench benchmark, the CPU was hitting over 95 degrees Celsius and the outside of the MacBook was scorching hot. But after cleaning, the outside actually feels much cooler to the touch. I can actually have it on my lap and touch above the function keys without burning myself. But even after removing all that dust and applying new thermal paste, the CPU still throttles and gets to around 95 degrees. Because this is an Intel CPU after all, so it will always have heat issues. But I did notice a significant improvement in the Cinebench score with the decreased thermal throttling. Increasing from 3593 before to 3832 after, which is basically like a free 7% upgrade to your CPU. And this might even improve further once the thermal pace has time to break in. I also ran the Unigen Heaven benchmark, but didn't really see much of a difference in performance, although I did notice the average temperature decrease from 83 degrees to 78, which is certainly not insignificant. But yeah guys, again, really impressive to see how this now 10 year old MacBook Pro actually managed to scrub up and just how much dirt and filth and dust was caught inside here. And not only that, but the effect that it actually had on the performance and the thermals of this device, it was actually quite significant. Now, if you do wanna see some more videos on this 10 year old secondhand eBay MacBook Pro, let me know down in the comment section. I will be upgrading or replacing uh, the battery inside here. It was looking a little bit swollen. I'll also be doing the SSD, so make sure you stay tuned for those videos. But apart from that, hopefully you enjoyed this little cleaning video and I'll catch you in the next one.